Okay, uh, so I just created this project. Week 10, exercise number one. Well, basically in that exercise, basic, what we'd like to do is to do this kind of uh, exercise number one, which is write a program that creates two-dimensional array, fills it using a scanner, then display that array, and then prints the sum and average of every row and column. Well, just, we're going to be able to do everything at the same time, at once. So we're going to do things one step at, at a time. So the first thing is we need to fill up some kind of a two-dimensional array. So let's declare a two-dimensional array by just naming it here, for example. And do we know what, uh, do we have some kind of restriction of what kind of data it goes into? So we don't. So let's just put it as, let's say, double. So we have a two-dimensional array that we call, I don't know, values. And then equal new uh, double. Did we? What kind of size? Do we have like some kind of restriction on the size? No. no. So I'm just going to do a very simple two by two. How about that? Now I need to read those from the user. So I need a scanner. So let's just have this scanner. Uh, let's call it KB just to make a change new scanner system dot in now I need to read those uh, values that comes from the user so I need to tell the user please enter the value so uh, let's just make in order for me to initialize this loop I'm just going to to initialize this array I need to have a loop so let's just do something like this which is I'm going to fill it row wise, column row wise, one every row at a time. So that's why I'm going to put this for loop. This is the first one. This is the second one. Values of i dot length. This is the number of rows. This is the number of columns. Which means now this i is going to be used as number of rows, and the j is for the number of columns. And I'm going to add the user to give me the next double. It would be nice if I display something on the screen, so please enter a number. And doing so, I'm able to enter some numbers into a two-dimensional array. Of course, this is not the best thing that I can do because I don't show the user where what what is it typing when this number is going to so it might be better maybe to specify something to explain to the user actually what's the size of that array and maybe how many numbers or what there is some some information to the user so he can know exactly what he's doing this time what i'm actually what i'm going to be doing is something like maybe this value of i and oops what happened yeah, i and j is equal to and then whatever is there is going to be entered by the user so I know what's what's the place exactly but now this i and j because it's been inside this double quotes it's going to be displayed i and j for every time I don't want it to be every time so I'm going to close the text here around the i and add a plus before and plus after and that's it same thing here just again put uh, double quotes before and after and then a plus between the double quotes and the variable and a plus between the double quotes and the variable on the left and on the right so this is going to be now display this thing and look what's inside of i and then display this thing and then look what's inside of j and then display this thing and then wait for the user to give you the number which will result in having us doing something like more interestingly like this and now I can know that actually what am I doing? So maybe put it values, so uh, something like that, because just this is my array, my array calls values. Now I read something. I created a two-dimensional array and then I filled it with the scanner. I'd like now to display that array and then print. Oh, there's something here that says I display the array and then display the sum and the average, which means there's some kind of a sequence. I cannot just display the sum and average and then display the array because the sequence is not respected there. So I need to display the array and then I'm going to be displaying the rest. 
So let's display the array. In order for me to display the array, let's just say here, display the array, and maybe just put a comment here before that says, initialize the array from the user, whatever. Now, if I'd like to display the array, basically, I'm just going to copy and paste because it's the same loop, except that instead of printing something like this, I am going to print this value i and j. Right? If I want to do what? Yes. S because I would like to display the array completely, I cannot display it while I'm reading it because it's going to mess up the display. Yeah. This, this way I'm, I'm just reading everything and then I'm displaying everything. But that's not enough because if I just run this thing, I'm going just to see, for example, one, oh sorry, one, then two, then three, then four, and I'm just going to see this weird 1.02.03 are basically actually it's one and then there's no space and it's two and no space and three and no space because this is what I did and there's no even go back to the line because I did never went back to the line so first thing is maybe let's just go back to the line when should I go back to the line that's maybe the question that some of you might ask after displaying this row I need to go back to the line so if I have like something like this at least now I'm just solving the problem cutting the problem in, in half I'm just fixing the problem with going back to the line but uh, this allows me to show you that this is important to be able to display different lines together now for example if I have like three rows and two columns now I'm able to do something like this now I have six values but at least you can see that it just displays every row in once this is displayed here so inside this inner loop I'm displaying all the columns and then I go back to the line and display all the columns and go back to the line and display all the columns so that's what I'm doing let's uh, and then the only thing that I need to add now is I'd like to have some kind of a space between these two which means what I'm doing is this oh add a space and then yeah I'm just going to add a space so it prints the number and then adds a space next to it and this is what is going to be resulting in this array now I can just say something like the array is something like this just to make a distinguish to distinguish between the entries and whatever I just put a backslash n before because I'd like to have some space this is just purely aesthetic things three four five and six and then this is what it means this this backslash in here where is it this backslash in here just put this line here and then it times it enters it's uh, it shows the array is and then it goes back to the line prints each elements and then goes back to the line and then that's it now we're getting almost things going now I'd like to have the sum an average of each row and column well I'm not going to do everything at once just let's do one step at a time let's just have the sum of each row and then later on I'll have the sum of each column so how can I do the sum of each row I need a variable so let's just declare a variable uh, double sum and I'll put it as zero I will have two sums so I just better now just name it sum of row some rows and then maybe another one that's sum of columns because I know that I have two sums so let's just prepare them to get ready for to use them now this sum of rows is going to be used in order to add all the rows how where should I do that Without, if I don't want to think, I'm just going to, you know what, just make another, let's make another loop. I don't need to print anything. I just need to do something like maybe this. And just the uh, sum of the rows is equal to something like this. Because I just, not really, this is not the sum of the rows. 
no, I just have to do this plus equal because I'd like to have actually what was before plus no sum of rows plus the value of that element that I'm at. Now the first time i is going to be 0, j0, zero, and then the second time i is going to be 0 and j1, and so on. Now if I just do this, that's fine. But you see this thing and this thing is almost, this loop is doing actually the same. Can't I just move this up and put it here for example? I could as well. Because I'm going row wise, so why have another loop? While I'm displaying, I can add the sum. So you take a value from the array, you put it on the screen, and you add it to the sum. And then you keep going again and again until you finish the all every element of the array. Do you agree with this? Because I can do something even more, I can just take this again and take it here. How about that? That's the same thing, except now, when I'm reading from the user, I put it inside of the array, and that value from the array, I just add it to the sum of the rows. But the problem is, sum of the rows, I don't have only one row. I have many rows. So it cannot be like one value. So this thing here that I'm, I was doing is not only actually sum of the rows, it's sum of all numbers. That's what, I'm tr that's what I was doing here. That's not the sum of the rows. If I'd like to have the sum of the rows, I need to have how many rows? Well, it depends on how many are declared here. I can use a loop now, maybe, as you can see, as you can say too, because I have three rows. Well, this is just every time once I finish, I just have the row, but this is not really something nice. I could just maybe do something like this. Uh, well, here. Here I calculate the rows and then before going back to the line I can just for example put some kind of a sp or maybe just like do something. Instead of just going back to the line I'm just going to add some kind of space and then plus and then sum of rows. Now what this thing is doing now after each line it is going just going to display the sum of the rows. Let's say one two, three, four, five, and six. Now you can see that this is the array and this is the sum of this thing. Really? The sum th this is okay for this one, but for this one it's not. Why do we have this problem? Because 21 is the total of everything. Because the first time I made sum to be zero and then I kept adding every element. When I added these two elements and I displayed, that was enough. But here, notice this, this is 7. 7 plus 3, that's 10. That's actually, it's just keep adding all the numbers. I don't want it to keep adding all the numbers. I want it to start from 0 every time it starts a row. And this is what I can do. In here, uh, now it becomes and uh, calculate the sum of the rows. Now what I can do is just do something like before going to the rows just make sure that the sum of the rows is equal to zero. So it just makes sum of the row zero, get the elements of that row and then display it and then is there another row? Yes. Make the sum zero and then get the element of that row, add them to the sum and then display it again. Now, doing so, I will end up having this is the sum of each one of them, right? This is 3, this is 7, and this is 11. Wonderful. Okay? So, what I can do now, maybe, uh, change the, yes, dis display this a little bit differently. Let's, for example, do something like this is the array and then put some spaces and then this is the sum and if I have the sum I can have also the average because the sum and the average is the average is based on the sum so basically when I have the sum I can just do something and display some kind of spaces and then plus and then sum of the rows 
divided by the number of rows. How do I know the number of rows? Values dot length. Values this is a double divided by int, which means that's OK, I can have that. And because I have a plus and a, a division, which one is going to happen first? The division, so I don't need to put parentheses, but for clarity, it's uh, better to put something like this. Now what I'm doing here, I'm just displaying two things at once. So basically, it's just let's put uh, all the numbers. And you can see now what is happening is that I'm calculating the sum, then I display the array, and then after displaying the array, I just, before going to the next line, I display the sum, which is this thing, and then I put some spaces and display the average. What I'd like to control maybe better these spaces between them, what I could do is just maybe put some kind of, or backslash t, that would have been nice. If I put backslash t between them instead of spaces, and I put two of them just to make enough spaces, I can just maybe do something like this. How about that? And I'll see how it works. Now, backslash t makes like some, uh, some kind of a tab. So it, gets, it gives me some space between them, like a similar s number of spaces. So I don't, have, so don't need to just care about how many spaces I need to have. But now I have something like this. And you can see, well, this looks good. Maybe I can just take an, uh, this one space out and then, so just make this closer a little bit here. And then here the sum is looking good. The average is a little bit too far, so I can just maybe take one average out or maybe add another backslash t here. And again, now that's much better. What if I'd like to do something even better? You know, there's too many of these. Let's just have one v one number after the decimal place. There's something that I can use with this time with print f, but print f works a little bit differently. Print f now I cannot use these pluses because it's not, that's not what I would like to do. Actually, this well, I can use here. That's no problem. But I mean, from here I just need to put percentage point one f. And then I want it to go back to the line, so I'll just put backslash n. So that's a lot there. So you see this thing here? The backslash t, backslash t, just some spaces. The backslash n, just go back to the line. But this thing here means I'm going to give you a number that is a real number. I want from that number only to have one decimal value after the decimal separator. And I'm not putting a plus because the plus will not work here. This is the value that I'd like to. So this value here is going to be replaced here. So let's try that and see. Well, this is just some kind of optional thing that I'm just showing you. Now that's much, much neater. But just some optional things again. If you don't like it, just remove it. Actually, this, box, this, this thing here works, this printf works in a, in, a, in a specific way, for example. You just give it, this is, normally this is made to work like this. There's some kind of codes for percentage D means this is an int. Percentage uh, F, this is like an, an, a float, a number that is a real number. And then you can specify, for example, this first one is going to be displayed as an int here. The second one is going to be displayed as a float here. Remember, some rows is a double. So if I display this sum of rows, uh, it's going to be a... Now, I have a problem. You see, it says illegal format conversion because this is a double. I just said D D for this for like a digit, so like an integer. It doesn't work. So I'm going to just do the same thing again because it's a, a float. I'm just displaying point one f same again, and this time it's going to be displayed in the same pattern. Whatever I display things. Now you can see that this is the sum and this is the average. There's a lot of things that I can do with formatting, but that's not the, the, the issue here. Now, the, uh, what I would like to show you is just another way, instead of just print line, print line all the time, we can have some other things that this was. But notice the main difference is that you put the text first, and then as after a comma, these are the arguments. So this first one goes into the first one, and the second one goes, what's the second one? This whole thing is the second one. The second one goes into the second one. The percentage F is the code. 
point one that is between the percentage and F is how many numbers do you want between the decimal places. For example, if I put three here and two here, that means that the sum is going to be having three numbers after the decimal value, decimal separator, and then two on the average. The second one will be having two. So you control how this is displayed. But just for fun, let's just keep it one. Now we did the sum of each row and the, the sum of each and the average of each column. Uh, sorry, the sum of each the sum and average of each of each row. Now what I need to do is just the same thing for the column. So how can I just add the sum of the columns? I need the same thing, another for loop. But this time uh, can I just copy this? Well I could. But there's one problem. Because this code over here, what it does is that this loop here starts with i and j being the i is the number of rows, because that's the maximum number of rows, and this is the maximum number of columns. I need to swap them. So now i becomes the number of columns, and j becomes the number of rows. But I have a problem, value of i, you remember, if I put this like this, there's going to be a problem with me, because the last time i is going to be incremented, it will be equal to, what is the, what is the maximum value of the columns? Two. So actually, i is going to be zero, which is okay, one, which is okay, but then two, there's no value of 2. When it's 2, it, this should be false. But the question that is going to be asked, is 2 lesser than values of 2 dot length? Do I have values dot, dot 2? No, I don't. Because let's check it here. This value, what I do? Value dot 2. It exists, actually. Because of this case here, it's 3. But because I'm not, actually, I'm not controlling here, I'm, I'm putting some value. What if now it's 2 here? Value of 2 is acceptable? No, it's not. Now if it's 2 by 2, now I have a problem. So it's always better when you have column-wise to start with this thing, one of them. Because column-wise, you're just assuming that all of them have the same columns, and check one of them will be enough. I'll take the first, I'll, I'll count the columns of the first row, and that will be what I'm doing here. This gives me the first row, and I'm here, this is how many columns in that first row. If I put i, I may have a problem in some special cases like these ones. Why this one will be a problem? Because value of 2 doesn't exist in this array. What exists is value of up to 2 minus 1, which is 1. So 0 and 1, that's all I have here. So value of 2 doesn't exist, so that's why I need to be careful with this i. Uh, where is this i? Here. I cannot leave it as i here. I have to put it as very zero. And the other thing is, I don't want to have this sum of rows now. This is becoming sum of columns. I'm just going to copy this here and there. And then instead of i and j, this should be j and i. Because j now is the rows. And i is the column. And this way I'm having, and this is the same thing, I'm just divided by the number of columns. Now this is going to be the number of every column. But this is the sum and then the average. But this is not going to be displayed in a way that is really interesting. Let's just see how this is going to be. Let's run. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6. Notice I still have this 0, 0, 0, 1, and then 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 2, 1, which means I have 3 by 2. This is the array, 3 by 2, but that's the problem now. This is the sum. Is this really the sum? 1 plus 3. That's 4 plus 5, that's 9. Sorry? 
Well, this is the second number here. After these things, this is the second number that is going to be four point five, which is nine divided by three. Is nine divided by three four point five? Not really. The same thing here, the average. Is this average correct? Because actually what I'm doing, I'm doing something weird. This, I'm dividing the sum by the number of rows. Is that how I calculate the average of a, a row? No. I need to know, can divide the sum by the number of columns, not the rows. So here, actually, I need to flip them up. And let me remove those tabs here maybe and just put uh, backslash n and or maybe you know what they just print ln instead of those things and I'm just going to print the sum of the columns and then put a space and then the sum of the average of those columns again one two three four five six and this is the sum of this column and this is the average of this column because I do, uh, I'm, div I'm printing them next to each other they, they, they look like not really interesting how about this one 2 plus 4 that's 6 6 plus 6 that's 12 that's what I have and 12 divided by 3 that's 4 which means the values are correct maybe the way they're displayed is not I can just maybe do some kind of things S out, uh, S out again, and just put some kind of something like that. Now, if I run this thing, if I type those numbers, it just shows you that this is the sum, this is the average of this column. But that's not really clear. Can I have like a better way to display them? Like down this three be below this this one? Yes, I can. I just need to have, for example, here backslash n. Now I'm displaying two things. Is that three, four, five, six? Now this is the sum. This is the average. But then again, on the same line, this is the sum. This is the average. Can I display them on the same line? Well, that's hard. That's hard if I use this this way here. Unless, if I want to do display them in one line, I would like to display the sum the first sum and the second sum but here the sum as soon as I calculate it I forget about it I put it back to zero <coughs> Gun. it's there but it doesn't want to come out so uh, how to display them into this into the second one here there's no way for me to use this same idea here that I'm doing. I have to use an array. Array of columns, sum of columns, in order for me to be able to do that. But what I can do, now maybe I can say sum, uh, maybe put this into sum of column is equal to, and put it something like this, and then maybe put that comma and then uh, average is and do something like this now I'm I'm doing it a little bit more in an interesting way that gives more information but I need to specify which column is that <laughs> so how can I display the number of the column the column for example 0 and the column 1 which one holds the number of columns I or J? J I holds the columns, right? I'm not sure, but I'm following you. Let's put J. Uh, there's a problem. What's my problem? J. Because J is declared only inside, so I'm not able to see it here. 
So maybe if I'm insisting, I would like to, you know, I want to have this J there. So I'm just going to take it outside and then just go back to the J here. I just would like to show you that J is not the right one. Let's see now with those numbers. Sum of column 3 is equal to, what I, why do I have sum of column 3? Because this j here is, it goes to 3 because value.land gives me what? The number of columns or number of rows? Uh, number of, uh, this thing here gives you the number of rows or the number of columns? Row. This gives you the number of rows. So j is the number of rows, that's why I have, after I finish the rows, the three ones, then this is the total that I have. That's not what I want, because I would like to have the number of columns, which is i, actually. So this should be back to how it was. And instead of this, now I can have, when i is 0, is going to tell me the sum of column 0 is, and the sum of column 1 is, and this is basically what I would like to. So don't forget this i and j, based on these maximum values that I don't want to reach, this is going to tell you which one is which. And also look at this thing. If I put i on the second set of brackets, this means this is the number of columns, not the number of rows. And j, if I put it in the first one, this is the number of rows. So the first set of brackets hold the number of rows and then the number the, in the, the index of the rows and then the second one is the index of the columns. So just don't get the confusion. There's a better way, if you'd like, really to use, like, display them some kind of a way, like one next to the other, which is using an array. And if you insist, I can show you that. But you don't seem to be insisting, so... Yes. You do? Sure. Just okay, a minute. Okay, let's, let's finish that in, in, a f in a minute. How to do that in an array? So, uh, now, some of columns, I don't want it to be a value, I want to remember all the sum of all columns, so I need to have then this sum of columns be an array. Now this array sum of columns is going to be of what size? What's the size of this array? It's the same number of columns that this value has, right? So, I can do something like this. This is giving me how many columns do I have, and I'm initializing this to be of the same size, the same number of columns that I have here, it's going to be also the number that I'm putting here. So which means if I change this to something else, that's five columns, now this becomes five. And if it's just two, it just stays two. Right? And join it. I'm sure you it's a lot of your 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 eyes are just delighted of what you can what you're seeing right now. You can't believe what you're seeing. So uh, now this thing here is giving you the number of columns. So if you put the number of columns as a size, this means the same number here is going to be here for the number of columns. Doing this will give me the ability to have an array one dimensional array of the same number of columns that I have in that two dimensional array. So which means now, instead of doing something like this, I can't, I will have to do something like this. Which means, why am I choosing i? Because i is used in the number of columns and that's what I want. I'd like to have the same number. So that's what I'm doing here. So column of i is going to be something that I'm going to do. And once I'm done, I'm not going to be displaying here. I'm just going to be displaying later. <coughs> Why later? Because I'm just preparing the values of the column. So in the first time, I just put the column to be 0, and then I calculate the values and add them, and then that's it. However, I just would like to be able to display, when I display the array, after finishing, I just would like to be able to display the first sum with the second sum at the same time, on the same line. But I cannot do that until I have finished all the calculations of all the sums. 
which basically I can do afterwards now after I have all the calculations I can have some kind of a for loop until this the sum of the columns uh, sorry sum of the columns dot length because now I just would like to display all the content of this sum of the columns and I'm going to do something like this sum of columns of i and then I'm going to put a space let's see what this is going to give us now if I type this you can see now I have the sum on the same line here why because what I did here I just calculated the sum all the sums and then I'm just putting another loop just to display them one uh, next to the other uh, that's, as you can see I'm pr using print and not println now when I have something like this what I can do because once I printed this this prints the sum of each column now if I'd like to print the sum of uh, the average as well because here you see I'm just having the sum if I'd like the average well same again but this time instead of printing the sum I need to divide it by how many columns do I have what just could be this one and this is going to give me maybe some kind of uh, very big numbers or not this is 4.5 because it's 9 divided by 2 and this is 9 the total of this is 9 and this is the sum and this is the average and all of them in one line this is 12 divided by 2 and actually this is going to work with any size so if you just change the size to make it 4 by 2 just because 2 by 4 so I'm I don't want to type many rows so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 now this is the array and this is the sum of each one of them now because I'm calculating in an array that's why I have many sums so this is the sum of the first column the second one and then the third and the fourth and you can see the sum is I mean the total of these things and then you divide this by 2 it gives you 1. Point f uh, sorry 6 divided by how many columns do I have This is the sum of the column of the row. Uh, what am I doing? This is the sum of the column. I have two columns. Why am I dividing 6 by... And if I divide by 2, it should be 3, not uh, 1.5. So why? What is happening is that this formula is wrong. Why am I divided by some column that length? I need to divide with how many rows do I have, not how many columns do I have. So, no, the columns I need to divide by how many rows because this is when I calculate this thing, okay, this average here, this number here should be the sum divided by how many rows do I have? So I have two rows. So now this is the correct formula to be able to seven and eight. Now, now this makes sense. Now I have 6 divided by 2, that's 3. 8 divided by 2, that's 4. 10 divided by etc. And if I want to go back here to the line here, I just need to go back to the line. And basically that's it. As you can see, a lot of fun. But I can make it even better by doing some whatever some more interesting things to show them basically to explain this is the sum this is the average but we uh, don't want to get into much details I just would like to show you this is it okay you like it right I'm, you are delighted with this and I think now you see why a lot of exercises are needed to be able to be comfortable with these things 
because the more you do, the better you're going to be. Now you see, at the beginning you were following, and then with more details, it's become to be a little bit too much, and then with even more details, it's become overwhelming. And then I'm sure that some of you start daydreaming, looking at the screen, but I'm thinking about some other things. But that's, that's normal, because you don't have a lot of experience with these things, so and also you don't ask a lot of questions, that's another thing. But uh, you don't have a lot of experience, so you just have too much to cope with. But when you, you are trained to use the so many different tools at the same time, then you're going to be more comfortable because you're used to using so many different tools. But now you're using maybe one and two tools, and then suddenly you have to use four and five and six at the same time, that becomes a little bit too much. So the advice? You have to go for this other exercises. Like I, kn I know, I'm, uh, this is just the first exercise uh, of a series, and I know because last week most of you they did not practice much. Some of you were absent, whatever. But then this is the effect that it has because next week, uh, last week was uh, the uh, starting of this complication. Now today, this week is going to be like a double the complication of last week. And this becomes even more complicated because you haven't practiced enough for just the first dimensional array. Now you have two dimensional arrays and you have to do a lot of different things with it. That's the problem. I told you, remember, if you skip something and you don't take it back, that's not going to work well for the next weeks. So luckily for you, next week is going to be a completely different topic. But this thing here is some kind of credit that you have to pay. And I mean, you ju have to practice more. So just do the exercise as much as you can. Now what we're going to like, I'd like you to do is this exercise number three here. Let's go for this one because you know what we've been doing. You have some code before for one dimensional array and then I'd like you to adapt it to work with the two dimensional array, which is very easy. We should be able to do it quite quickly. Of course, when we do the maximum, we're going to be doing the minimum as well.